Hey everybody, Jody Gansick here. Happy New Year to you and yours. We took a little bit of time off for the holidays, as I'm sure you did. And now Lighting Answers is back for 2016, starting off the year with CES. Of course, it used to just be called the Consumer Electronics Show. No one has time to actually say those three words, so now it's just CES. Since CES is so enormous, and we generally focus on home automation, the smart home, smart lighting, LED lighting, and whatnot, uh, we are focusing our attention on those areas and expanding a little bit more, but we can't bring you everything. So we're gonna bring you a number of things that we think are interesting or cool, or maybe a little bit crazy, and uh, do those over a couple episodes so you can actually digest all the information. And then at the very end of this kind of little mini series, we'll have a wrap up and kind of our predictions for the rest of the year of where we're gonna be in about a year from now with home automation and the connected space and LED lighting and all that good stuff. So where do we get started? Well, smart hubs, of course, you know, have been all the rage for the past couple years. Uh, initially uh, getting started with uh, smart things causing, I think, the biggest uh, frenzy with their uh, very successful uh, crowdfunding campaign. And we saw that continuing last year. We saw, obviously, technologies actually come to market in terms of actual products, things like HomeKit. We're seeing smart hubs continue. Um, whether they're as exciting as they used to be is another thing. Um, I think people understand now that there's all these different hubs from all these different names. Some of them play with different technologies, some don't. One of the larger announcements, uh, speaking of smart things to kind of kick things off, is of course Samsung, who bought smart things about a year and a half ago um, and rebranded everything um, over the past few months. So Samsung announced that all of its 2016 smart TVs, or SUHD, TVs are going to be IOT or Internet of Things enabled. Now, you would think that they're going to just put all that technology into the TV, and that's what we thought with the original press announcement from a few days ago. But as it turns out, you have to have this dongle called the Smart Things Extend, plug that into your 2016 smart TV, and then you get those features. But it will be a free dongle that you can get. We don't know if they're going to just come with the TV or you can order it separately. Samsung hasn't really provided those details. But so speaking of smart things itself, they're now offering with their home security monitoring kit that they kind of introduced. They had a number of kits. They got rid of them and they introduced this one. Now it makes sense. So they've partnered with Scout to offer home security monitoring with their, of course, home security monitoring kit. No contract at $20 a month. So this is interesting. Now we're starting to see these do-it-yourself home automation kits or just, you know, put all the different pieces together yourself. Now we're starting to see some of these companies, the actual um, security companies, and of course they're partnering with the uh, smart home companies to put these things together and not lock you into some kind of contract. Traditionally, the security um, the security field has kind of been separate in a way from home automation, even though one might think that those actually are really good together. And of course, the home automation, the security companies like ADT have been getting into the home automation business as well and offering their, you know, keypads and their kind of hubs uh, with technology that supports Z-Wave and Zigbee and, and other home automation protocols. So now another announcement. So ADT has picked August. Um, that's pretty, this is another CES, uh, around CES announcement. ADT ha itself has picked August, among other things, to work with its new Canopy service. This is a, again, a contract-free monitoring service. It's going to actually work with a number of different products, including the Roost battery. There's a weird name for that. We're going to actually review that um, smart battery coming up. That's for smoke alarms. But this is interesting. So now it means that you can piece together whatever you want into a smart home system and get an actual security monitoring service, not included, but you can get it separately, sort of a la carte. It's not a contract. There's no going to be early termination fees. You're not going to have to pay years at a time. And there's not going to be someone showing up at your door, probably. You can just do it yourself and hook it all up. And like I talked about at the beginning, so smart home hubs, we've got another one. LG Electronics introduces the smart think that's with a Q instead of a K, um, their home automation hub, it's gonna support Z-Wave, Zigbee, Bluetooth, all the, the standard stuff that you would expect. 
It looks strangely like the Amazon Echo, except it's got a display on the top of it, and it's a little bit fatter and a little bit shorter, and it's kind of like angled at the top. Is everything going to be a cylinder or a sphere or some triangle thing coming up? I don't know. Anyways, no price or availability was announced. So we'll watch it and we'll let you know when you can get your hands on the Smart Think from LG. So something that's in and around home automation, HomeAway, which is a leader in vacation rentals, not Airbnb, but something else. They've introduced the HomeAway app for the Apple TV, uh, the fourth generation, obviously. And the Apple TV could be considered a home automation device as it connects your um, Siri um, via HomeKit on its um, hub technology into your home. That didn't really sound great, but anyways, you know what I mean. Um, so this app allows people who rent out their homes um, through the HomeAway network to set up really cool hospitality like screens, menus, and information. Things like how to operate the TV or the pool or the Sonos uh, speaker system or uh, what's around, nightlife, dining, entertainment, all that kind of stuff. That's actually pretty cool as it makes if you're renting your home to someone, it makes the experience kind of more like a hotel. And speaking of Airbnb, a few months ago, they introduced their host assist platform. This is a way of bringing partners into the Airbnb system and the app so that they can do things such as integrate with smart locks. So basically, if you set up an Airbnb that you're going to stay at and there is a smart lock present, they can allow you to get access to that no keys required, no codes required. It's all done digitally and securely through key exchanges with the apps um, with those smart locks. Things like, you know, the one that we've reviewed specifically and I use every day, August, but also from Kivo, Yale, and Nest integration as well. So two last quick things to round out our first episode of CES coverage. Not really sure how these are in home automation, but they sounded kind of cool, and anyways, we thought we would tell you about them. So Procter & Gamble introduces their Febreze branded scent diffuser that's Internet of Things enabled with a humidity and temperature sensor. And that's unfortunately all we know at this point. No pricing, no availability, and no knowledge of what it actually does other than Maybe when you come home or when you're approaching your house, you know, it kind of adds some scent or maybe there's some something in the morning that you can program it to have some wonderful aroma or something. So you wake up to, you know, some wonderful scent. Other than that, we really don't know any specs. So when we do, we'll let you know. Last but not least is something you can buy right now that will wake you up with various scents or aromas every morning. It's called the Sensor Wake, and it's $89 as a pre-order special for the moment, and it will ship in June. It does wake you up with the various scents or aromas of peaches or coffee or, I guess, the ocean or whatever you would want. The little capsules will last 30 uses and are about $10 each in addition to the one that comes with it of your choice. Um... Whether it's really a home automation product or not, I guess it has an alarm clock built in. Not sure if you can ever connect it to anything else because details are scarce at this point, but it does sound pretty cool. Of course, you could program your coffee pot to simply start brewing at the appropriate time every morning and then you wouldn't need this thing. But your coffee pot doesn't make like peach or ocean sense. That's it for our first episode of uh, CES coverage for 2016. We're going to have additional ones coming up on the different topics and then our wrap-up show. Again, if you haven't subscribed to Lighting Answers on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button up there right now. And otherwise, I'm Joe Deganzik, and I'll talk to you next time.